I think we'd all be worried about something uh, weighing 20 tons that's out of control in space. But the fact is that the odds of it doing any damage at all, in fact, are very, very low. Most of it will burn up in the atmosphere. There will be some components like the, the main engines that might survive down to the surface. But what's in our favor is that uh, more than 70% of the Earth is covered in water, uh, and the oceans are a very big target uh, within which things like this can disappear. Having said that, it is possible that there could be damage. There was a similar Long March 5B rocket launch about a year ago, uh, and some of the debris from that uh, damaged buildings in the Ivory Coast. Well, Fred, given it is spiraling out of control to a degree, can you predict what's going to happen, when and where it might land? So the real difficulty here is that uh, this object, like everything in space, is moving very, very fast. Uh, it's nearly eight kilometers per second. And so that means that, um, you know, if you have a, a two minute error in the time in which you predict it will hit the Earth, that's a thousand kilometers effectively. So you, you really have great difficulty uh, in predicting. And at the moment, uh, the best estimates have the, the, the spacecraft uh, re-entering the atmosphere on Sunday afternoon, our time, early afternoon, uh, plus or minus 16 hours. And that means it could be anywhere within those wide latitude uh, limits that some of us have seen on TV already going up uh, a long way north and down as far as Hobart here in the Southern Hemisphere. Wow, quite a big window. How often do rockets enter Earth's atmosphere in an uncontrolled way against international guidelines? Yeah, it's... it's it's not a very often, not a very frequent occurrence, and, and the, the critical point is the mass of the of the rocket. So um, something bigger than ten tons would normally be, uh, if not prohibited by space law, certainly discouraged from uh, being allowed to enter to re-enter the atmosphere in an uncontrolled way. Uh, many smaller spacecraft do, uh, and they simply burn up in the atmosphere. But the, the critical thing about this one is its mass. Uh, it does happen from time to time. Perhaps the biggest uh, uncontrolled re-entry in living memory was in 1979 when Skylab uh, deposited some of its components in Western Australia to great fanfare, actually. Uh, it's a, there's a long and interesting story about that. Maybe there will be a similarly interesting story about the Long March 5B rocket that will find its way back to Earth one way or another, probably on Sunday. We shall find out. What is supposed to happen according to international guidelines if it is controlled? Yes, that's a great question. And uh, it, it's sort of relevant to whereabouts we are on the, on the Earth because there is a point uh, in the South Pacific Ocean which is the furthest point on the planet from land. And that is where most uh, controlled re-entries aim for. Uh, sometimes called the space graveyard. It's where uh, rocket bodies uh, and perhaps disabled satellites that might not entirely burn up in the atmosphere, that's where they aim for, that, that dead zone in the Pacific. Can you imagine what divers would discover there over time? <laughs> well, the US has said it has no plans to shoot uh, this particular Chinese one down before it can harm anyone. How would that have worked? It may not have worked very well because you, um, if you, you know, aim at a, a, a piece of space debris like this, there's a good chance you'll just end up with a lot more bits of space debris, and the heavy stuff might still survive its re-entry. And there are other considerations. There's a legal consideration that that could be seen as a hostile act because anything that comes back to Earth from space is actually under the ownership of the organisation and, in particular, the nation that put it there. Uh, so it's a difficult legal area. Now, Fred, while I've got you here, I do have to ask you about something spectacular we can expect to see in the sky, not the rocket, but if we look up into the sky tonight, we might catch a glimpse of a little something? Indeed, um, it's the other end of the scale of things coming at us from space. This is the natural uh, uh, progression of the Earth in its orbit. Uh, as it goes around the sun, it frequently runs into clouds of dust particles left behind by comets. And uh, in the early hours of tomorrow morning, and actually for the next couple of days, uh, we will be passing through the dust cloud left behind by Comet Halley, the most famous of all comets. And it's a meteor shower called the Eta Aquirids. Uh, meteor showers are named after the constellation or star from which 
the meteors appear to come. They all seem to come from a particular direction. So from about three o'clock tomorrow morning and for the next couple of mornings, um, if people want to get up, there's a crescent moon which might brighten the sky a bit. If you can get away from city lights, so much the better. But you might see uh, this rewarding spectacle of a meteor, not every second or anything like that, but certainly every two or three minutes, uh, which all seem to come from the same part of the sky in the northeast above the horizon. Exciting. Worth wrapping up warm for, I, yeah. I'd imagine. Now, just finally, Elon Musk's SpaceX has launched and successfully landed its Starship rocket after four failed attempts. How significant is this? It's very significant indeed and must be a great relief to SpaceX because about a week ago they were awarded a big contract to use this same hardware uh, to take uh, astronauts uh, to the moon. So SpaceX has won that contract and I'm sure their successful landing, in fact on the fifth attempt, uh, has reassured a lot of people that this uh, enormous rocket, it's a, an incredible machine, uh, can safely land itself autonomously where you want it to be and not burst into flames at the end of it as it has tended to do before. Well, Fred Watson, great to get your insights. Thank you for talking to us tonight. Very exciting times. Thank you. It is. Thanks, Yvonne. Thank you.